nickel cadmium and nickel metal hydrate batteries. So nickel cadmium and nickel metal hydrate batteries are two types of interesting secondary battery, rechargeable batteries. So basically, if we are now want to focus our attention on the first one, the nickel cadmium battery. This type of battery is, uh, uh, it was quite interesting for a lot of time as one of the most used types of secondary battery, but uh, and is based basically on the use uh, on a positive electrode that is containing nickel oxide hydroxide and cadmium in the negative pole. Basically, nickel cadmium batteries can be disposed in a cylinder uh, battery, so in order to save volume, separating the two electrodes with a specific separator that is impregnated with the electrolyte solution and alkaline solution or water solutions having around 30% of uh, so uh, potassium hydroxide inside in order to ensure the high value of pH. So we are looking about, also in this case, alkaline batteries, as in the case of, uh, for instance, zinc air. So the electrolyte is an alkaline water-based solution. Now what is interesting to say about the nickel cadmium is obviously the structure and the discharging reaction. On the negative pole that is acting as a anode, we have our cadmium that is reacting with two times OH- in order to be oxidized leading to the corresponding hydroxide and two electrons. And then we have the positive terminal in which our nickel oxide hydroxide can react two times of this with water in order to form the corresponding hydroxide and two times OH minus. This literally means that since these types of anions created are necessary in order to promote the oxidations of cadmium leading to this product, uh, we need to have something that is a membrane in order to separate the two electrodes, a membrane that is impregnated with the electrolyte solution that can allow the passage of these anions, since this is necessary if we want to close the circuit. Nothing different with respect to the membrane that we have described, for instance, in vanadium redox fuel battery, in which in that case we have described how it's necessary the vehiculations of H plus in order to balancing the generated excess of charge during the proceedings of the reaction. In this case, basically, literally is the same thing, but we need to vehiculate these types of ions. So, in general, these types of battery having this discharging reaction, so this is acting as an anode and this is acting as a cathode, as a cathode. obviously in the case of charging we have the opposite reaction, are characterized with this structure, so we have our well-known cell, the electrolyte with the, for instance, chopper and chopper or chopper and aluminum current collector, and on this collector of chopper, we have our electrode. One that is composed of cadmium, and the other one that is composed of nickel oxide, hydroxide. Inside, we have this membrane separating the two zones, and we have obviously an alkaline solution. So, we are in aqueous system, in aqueous system, with a very high pH, and it's important to remember that the percentage of uh, Potassium hydroxide is around 30% in our electrolyte. We have our circuit, and basically what is happening is that the cadmium is passed from cadmium 0 to cadmium 2 plus, and the electrons are released in this direction. And the nickel oxide hydroxide is reduced in nickel hydroxide due to the, the um, electrons that are passing from the external circuit. So nothing different with a common battery. But what is important to say is that from the 19, 19 um, 
your nickel cadmium batteries are not used anymore. Why? Because we have significantly hazard and risks connected with the use of cadmium that is quite toxic for human health. And so we respect this battery nickel metal hydrate as a substitute were introduced and were introduced in order to provide a result that is quite similar, even better, especially in capacity and in um, uh, energetic density. We do say that the nickel metal hydrate batteries are characterized with a capacity that is three times higher with respect to the uh, nickel cadmium capacity and with an energy density that is quite close to lithium ions battery. So it's important to remember what is the difference between capa ca specific capacity and energetic density. Because the energetic density we have described very well this in the Dragon plot. Obviously, the difference between energetic density and specific energy is that one is referred over weight, unit of weight, and one is referred over a unit of volume. So the specific energy is the energy referred for unit of weight, so it's energy over kilograms, whereas the density is the energy over unit of volume. So, but basically the point is this one, that the specific energy, uh, energetic density, is uh, a measure to quantify how much energy we have stored in the batteries, but in, uh, described is in the form of watt per hour, basically joule, whereas the capacity is something similar. It quantifies also again the amount of total electric energy and for a certain point of view tell us how much long our batteries can work working a specific current but is expressed not in watt per hour, in ampere per hour. The concept is a little bit similar, but the unit of measures are different. So don't, be, um, don't make this mistake, don't make confusion between the specific uh, uh, capacity and energy, energetic density. So in this case, so, uh, since cadmium is really dangerous, so here we have problem concerning the use of these species, we have introduced the nickel metal hydrate batteries. So nickel metal hydrate batteries are an extremely interesting type of rechargeable batteries as nickel cadmium one. But with more interesting advantages in terms of capacity and also in terms of safety. And in this case, obviously, we have no cadmium, even if in nickel metal hydrate concerning an analysis on the discharging reaction, the positive terminals is still remain the same. Obviously, in this case, the reactions can be written also without the distributive coefficient, but it's nothing different, basically. Because each single term involved, obviously, here I miss to write the presence of two electrons. In this case, one electrons. Because, obviously, this is a reduction. And... Um, and so the positive terminal, so the reactions occurring here is exactly the same, but what is different is what is happening on the native pole. Since here we have no and more cadmium, but we are using what? We are using a specific metal alloy, a metal alloy that can um, absorb hydrogen, can interact with hydrogen. So basically we have an absorbing, an hydrogen absorbing metal alloy. And this hydrogen absorbing metal alloy, this metal hydrate, can react with this OH- in order to form water. So this hydrogen is extracted and can react with this one forming water. Plus the metal that now is without this alloy our hydrogen atoms and one electrons. And so we have the transformations of the metal hydrate reacting with OH- released from this reaction in order to form the metal without hydrogen and release electrons. It's are collected here, promoting the reductions of this one that can release OH-, it is collected again in this way. And so this is the working mechanism of nickel metal hydrate batteries. And nickel metal hydrate batteries is extremely interesting type of electrical device due to their interesting rechargeabilities even if we have some problem. For instance, both nickel cadmium and nickel metal hydrate batteries can undergo to the memory effect. 
Memory effect basically is an effect uh, that it is uh, uh, sporadic, it's not always present, only sometimes. But it's a really, uh, really bad situation because it's a phenomenon that occurs when we are recharging our nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydrate before a complete discharge. Maybe the reaction is proceeding and we have a, a little bit of energy that still remain, but maybe we decide to recharge the battery even if this battery is not completely discharged. What's happened is that the battery can feel the situation and during a further discharging cycle, after the recharging, the battery will stop until the point in which we have recharged it at the very beginning. So if we are, for instance, imagining that this is the total uh, battery level and so when the battery proceeds, the charging level is decreasing, is decreasing, is decreasing so we are decreasing the charging level, the level of charge but maybe the minimum when the battery is completely discharged, uh, discharged is here but maybe we decide that when we arrive here, so we have a little bit of residual energy, this, we can decide to recharge the battery again. And so we can repristine to the original situation. We are recharging the battery and we are starting with the same total energy as at the very beginning. What is happening is that if memory effect occurs, if we start to uh, use the battery again, the battery stops to work when we arrive here and not here. So the battery feel that we have stopped it before at a certain point and it's not able anymore to undergo further. So this is obviously not always present, only sometimes it's a real event, but it's an event that could be present in nickel cadmium and in nickel metal hydrate batteries.